August 14th Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Colossians chapter 2 from the New Testament For I want you to know how great a struggle I have for you and for those in Laodicea and for those who have not met me face to face. My goal is that their hearts, having been knit together in love, may be encouraged and that they may have all the riches that assurance brings in their understanding of the knowledge of the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I say this so that no one will deceive you through arguments that sound reasonable. For though I am absent from you in body, I am present with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your morale and the firmness of your faith in Christ. Therefore, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, Continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him and firm in your faith just as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. Be careful not to allow anyone to captivate you through an empty, deceitful philosophy that is according to human traditions and the elemental spirits of the world and not according to Christ. For in him all the fullness of deity lives in bodily form and you have been filled in him who is the head over every ruler and authority. In him you also were circumcised, not, however, with a circumcision performed by human hands, but by the removal of the fleshy body, that is, through the circumcision done by Christ. Having been buried with him in baptism, you also have been raised with him through your faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And even though you were dead in your transgressions and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, he nevertheless made you alive with him, having forgiven all your transgressions. He has destroyed what was against us, a certificate of indebtedness expressed in decrees opposed to us. He has taken it away by nailing it to the cross. Disarming the rulers and authorities, he has made a public disgrace of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you with respect to food or drink or in the matter of a feast, new moon, or Sabbath days. These are only the shadow of the things to come, but the reality is Christ. Let no one who delights in humility and the worship of angels pass judgment on you. That person goes on at great lengths about what he has supposedly seen, but he is puffed up with empty notions by his fleshy mind. He is not held fast to the head from whom the whole body, supported and knit together through its ligaments and sinews, grows with a growth that is from God. If you have died with Christ to the elemental spirits of the world, why do you submit to them as though you lived in the world? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. These are all destined to perish with use, founded as they are on human commands and teachings. Even though they have the appearance of wisdom with their self-imposed worship and false humility achieved by an unsparing treatment of the body, a wisdom with no true value, they in reality result in fleshy indulgence. God, thank you for putting into our lives through Colossians firm teaching about what we do with false prophets, uh, teachers who weren't teaching uh, your word. You know, you talk about how the, all of those types of people have been given additional responsibility and because they've been given additional responsibility for not only teaching others about you, but also their walk with you, uh, that they're going to be held to a higher standard. And in here, Paul isn't judging them. He definitely leaves that up for you, but he is calling them out. And there's a big difference, and you're really clear about that in the Bible. Uh, and he does it for one very specific reason. And in the version of the Bible we just read, the word is captivate. Be careful not to allow anyone to captivate you through an empty, deceitful philosophy that is according to human traditions and the elemental spirit of the world and not according to Christ. Captivate. So enchant, bewitch, sidetrack, uh, Take somebody off of their path that they're walking and move them someplace else. Focus their attention on something else. And it's interesting because if somebody is teaching about something crazy, we can say, oh, 
okay, that's not the word of God. That's not going to captivate me. I need to move on. That person's crazy. <laughs> so some of those things, some of the cults and things like that are pretty easy to follow. It's pretty easy to say, no, that's not what I want to do. However, when it gets a, a little bit down to finer areas, that's where we kind of start to lose our sense of reasoning. Um, Numbers 23, 19 talks about listening to the voice of God because it will never contradict the word of God. So if somebody is out there preaching, being a pastor, a teacher, uh, deacon, whatever they want to call themselves, and what they're saying doesn't match up with the word of God, that should be our clear black and white statement that those are people we don't need to listen to. Um, not everyone is perfect. I am far from perfect. Uh, but you have called those people to be in those positions and you've called them to a higher standard because they have more responsibility than other people you've called to other things. And in the Bible, you explain that. So we have to be really careful to not be sidetracked by people who are teaching us bad theology, bad doctrine. I was in a bookstore the other day that had just rows upon rows of, of Christian, in quotes, Christian books. And I almost died laughing because I was there for about an hour looking at all the books. And when I was done, there was only about six of them that I would probably recommend to anybody. Out of all of these, these probably thousands and thousands of books, six that I would recommend uh, that anybody read because I'm so picky now about staying as close as possible to the Word of God. And interestingly enough, I wasn't always this way. Um, I used to believe that Oprah was speaking truth. Yeah, everybody's gonna laugh at me right now. But you know that God, you knew I was completely sidetracked. I was seeking something, but I was seeking all the wrong things. And so I thought, ah, Oprah has all this like uh, good people on her show and they're talking about good things. They're talking about being nice to people and taking care of people uh, and worshiping a, a God. Uh, she's just not really talking about you, a God, unfortunately, but she does, she does talk in religious terms. And so there's a point in my life where I thought she had it going on. Um, and, and now I just am mortified that I spent that much time listening to somebody who was false. Couldn't be more false. Um, it's good to be nice to other people, but she, uh, she is professing a lot of things that aren't true, that aren't from uh, your word, God. And I now know that and have sought repentance for <laughs> listening to that. And there were other people that came into my life. There were um, Indian shaman type of people um, that I spoke with and they were very spiritual, but they weren't the word of God. And once you started changing my heart and I was going to church, I was going to church listening to a pastor who was super excited about your word, very, I guess we'd say on fire for using evangelical terms. Um, just seemed to have it all going on and I was just in awe of hearing somebody preach the word of God in such an amazing way. But over time, his sermons started to lean more about self-empowerment and it's about us and, and a little bit into the prosperity piece and um, it started to feel really uncomfortable and he started actually using less and less Bible verses to get to a point. Um, it was more about his thoughts and his thoughts and his thoughts. And um, as you know, God, you ended up allowing me to leave that church as it imploded all around us when everything started to swirl around him. And, and sadly, we found out a lot of other things that were going on at the same time. He was definitely captivated. He was captivated first and foremost by himself. And um, because he was captivated by himself, he was then captivated by money. The attention of women even though he is married and so this captivation piece that Paul talks about is so incredibly serious because once we're captivated by something outside of your word we lose focus of our relationship with you and we end up in all of these other sin areas 
there was a, a time as I learned what it meant to be a Christian that, that I did read a ton of books. I was just seeking information from every place possible. I was just like a, an empty sponge just soaking up all of this information. And I even back then would pick up books um, from like Joel Olstein and things like that. Um, and, and same thing, eventually there was a point in time where as you allowed me to learn more about your word and more about the relationship with you and as my comfort level to get in closer and closer and closer and tighter and tighter to the Bible and exactly what you said, the more all of these other people started to fall away from what that truth was, whether it was a prosperity doctrine, whether it was a self-empowerment doctrine. And Paul actually talks about that a little bit at the end of Colossians 2, about making it about you. Um, there's all this doctrine out there that starts to captivate us. Um, and with that captivation comes our focus. And with that focus off of you, God, then other things can come into our life. Other things start to get really squishy. And this is an area that's really uncomfortable for a lot of people because they're very set in their beliefs. Um, there was people who tried to tell me that Oprah was not who I thought she was, and I wouldn't listen. I thought, oh, they don't know what they're talking about and how mean of them to, to act that way. And, and now I know, and now I've had to apologize to them for that. So it's just a process where you've allowed me, very graciously allowed me to learn more and more and more about your word. And Paul was that way. He was so tight to what the word of God was, so incredibly black and white about it that the second somebody started talking about something outside of that i'm sure the hairs on the back of his of, of his neck just stood up he's like no 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 i am calling out all of these false prophets i'm calling out all of these false teachers i'm calling them out i don't think you understand i love you so much that i don't want you to get off track i love you so much i don't want you to be captivated even for an hour on sunday by something that isn't from the word of God. I love you so much that all I want your life to be filled with is the word of God. And it's not just, I mean, Colossians 2, as you know, God talks about these, these false teachers, but there's a lot of things that can captivate us, right? That become false teachers. Uh, TV, <laughs> big false teacher, and definitely captivating. Um, Books, if they're the wrong kind, not just even Christian books, but, but fiction and nonfiction books can captivate us and, and draw our attention away to other things. I was just reading an, an, a quote from C.S. Lewis, one of my favorite writers, and it says, I am progressing along the path of life in my ordinary, contentedly fallen and godless condition, absorbed in a merry meeting with my friends for the morrow, or a bit of work that tickles my vanity today, or a holiday. Or a new book when suddenly a stab of abdominal pain that threatens serious disease or a headline in the newspapers that threatens us all with destruction sends this whole pack of cards tumbling down at first i'm overwhelmed and all my little happinesses look like broken toys then slowly and reluctantly bit by bit i try to bring myself into the frame of mind that i should be in at all times I remind myself that all these toys were never intended to possess my heart, that my true good is in another world and my only real treasure is Christ. And perhaps by God's grace I succeed and for a day or two become a creature consciously dependent on God and drawing its strength from the right sources. When C.S. Lewis talks about this captivation he talks about it in a way of distraction almost of vanity of following what it is that we want he talks about he talks about captivate in the sense of possession that the toys were never intended to possess his heart so all of these things in the world God not just the false teachers who we surround ourselves with as as we seek to learn things or perhaps they provide comfort or entertainment um, not so much a relationship with you, but everything else in this world that captivates us away from you are all the things that Paul talks about, that our sole focus in this life, just as C.S. Lewis was talking about, should be about you, to be dependent upon you, drawing strength from you, 
focusing on you, being captivated by you, God. I think part of my relationship with you, my favorite part of that relationship with you is the growing part. It's the hardest part. It's the most painful part. <laughs> But it's that growing part as I learned that Oprah wasn't all that and the other people whose information or seminars I used to go to and books I would read and, and webinars I would go to um, each step as I learned more and more about you and more about your true word and more about your your nature and who you really were and who you really are in people's lives the the less I was willing to give allowances for anybody's um, idea of who you were it needed to be according to the word that you gave us sometimes i wish that the only book in the world was just the bible so we wouldn't have all these other thought processes and facets and and ways to captivate our heart away from you but sometimes i think it's good for people like c.s lewis or piper or francis chan to show us um, maybe illuminate different areas or say them in a way that we had never thought of before but still staying completely true to your word God to the Bible you gave us as a way to live our lives grow in our relationship with you and glorify you which is what we were ultimately made for God I thank you so much for teaching me about you and your word God, I just pray that that learning and that education and that humbleness in your word would just continue for the rest of my life. I am very much in love and very captivated by your word. And nothing delights me more than the time I get to spend with you each day. Reading your word, recording your word, learning about your word, writing about your word, and then most importantly, talking to other people about your word. God, thank you for being so patient with me, so gracious with me, and so supportive and encouraging as I learn these things. Like I said before, the more I learn, the less I really do think I know. But I love that part of our relationship, God. Thank you. In your son's name I pray. Amen.